and the first seminar was a complete disaster as I tried to talk about what Feynman had been doing and Oppenheimer interrupted every sentence and told me what, what, how it ought to have been said and how if I had understood the thing right it wouldn't have sounded like that. He, he always knew everything better and he was a terribly bad organizer of seminars. I mean, he would, you know, he, he had to have the center stage for, him, for himself and, and he couldn't shut up. And we couldn't tell him to shut up. So, in fact, there was very little communication at all. And a great deal of frustration on your part. Oh, I felt terrible and, and uh, <coughs> I remember going out and after this seminar and uh, going to Cecile for consolation, and, and Cecile was wonderful. I mean, she was really like a mother to me at that point. And, and your feeling was if you couldn't convince Oppenheimer, then it was hopeless, or? I don't know whether I ever felt that. I ever felt Oppenheimer was a bigoted old fool. I mean, I wasn't, I was arrogant you were confident. enough. Mm -hmm. Arrogant enough to be confident that that I had the stuff, and sooner or later it it, it would be accepted. But, but it was it was very irritating and frustrating not to be able to, mm -hmm. to get a hearing. And, and anyway, Cecile was very comforting. And then that night, I was walking around by myself in the in, in the dark, and there was a, a huge aurora in the sky. It was the brightest aurora I'd ever seen, and the whole sky lit up red and green, and, and somehow that looked as though God was uh, saying something. And <laughs> so, so, after all, things aren't so bad. If God is with me, I'm okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, so a week later, I had the second seminar, and it went a little bit better, but it still was pretty bad. And. So I, I still didn't get much of a hearing, and at that point, uh, uh, Hans Beta somehow heard about this, and he talked with Oppenheimer on the telephone, I think. I think he came down to Princeton, and he heard, he had, a, he saw you in action. Oh, saw... yes, yes, and, but that's after the telephone call, I think. I so, see, okay. I think that he had yeah. telephoned Oppie and said, you really ought to listen to Dyson, you know. He really has something to say and you should listen. And so then Beta himself came on to, to, the, to the next seminar mm -hmm. which I was giving. Mm -hmm. And uh, Oppenheimer continued to interrupt, but Beta, Beta then c came to my help and uh, actually he was able to tell Oppenheimer to shut up, I mean, and, which only he could do. And, and then Oppenheimer would listen. And then he finally began to listen. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm saying he would listen to Beta and shut up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the third seminar he started to listen, and then I actually gave five altogether. And so the fourth and the fifth were fine, and, and by that time he really got interested. He said, began to understand that uh, there was something worth listening to. And, and then the, the uh, at some point, I don't remember exactly at which point, he put a little note in my mailbox saying Nolo Contendere and, and 